Hey, welcome back. I hope that opening footage didn't scare some of you away. Yeah, that is the table that was in the thumbnail that you saw uh, with Jack Nicholson's dead body from The Shining. That blue footage you saw at the beginning uh, of the opening of this video, I was going for The Shining look, if you could tell. Um, not to scare you away, but just, you know, to, to, to give that horror impersonation that... Um, that light blue LUT that I put over the footage, I wanted to make it look colder than it actually was. Uh, yes, we did get some snow, as you can tell. We got quite a bit of snow. Um, this actually went down a little bit because it rained the day after, but nonetheless, we have snow, okay? So in today's vlog, we're gonna be talking about um, how to survive the winters here in Maine, all right? And I hope you're still planning to move to Maine. Hi, I'm Frank Abbott, for those of you who don't know me, welcome to my channel. In this episode of Moving to Maine, vlog number three, uh, we're going to be talking about how to survive the winters in Maine. But first, a word from our sponsor. That's right, Crossroads Coffee Beans out of Westport Island. If you love fresh roasted coffee like I do, um, I discovered Steve by accident. I was picking up mail on Westport Island because that's I'm a mailman. You, most of you know that already. And I picked up a box from his address and the heat from the truck it made the vehicle smell like coffee and I was like wow I gotta order some of his coffee so Crossroads coffee beans uh, is where I get my coffee if you're interested in fresh roasted coffee ordering his coffee is very simple you navigate to the home page when you get to the top there the shop button is at the top right you click on that it'll give you a selection of coffees it'll present you with a different selection I happen to like the cafe Brazil and uh, there's Peru and Guatemala, all kinds of different ones. Make your selection, add it to your cart, uh, select your whole bean or, or ground coffee, whatever you like, and then hit uh, pay for it with either the credit card, which I recommend, or PayPal. I use PayPal, it's my preference. to drink bad coffee. I'll leave the link down in the video's description. Get you some coffee, try it out. I know you'll be happy. If you're moving up here, that's the roaster I would recommend, okay? So our topic today is surviving the winters here in Maine. And yeah, I'm just walking and shooting. I may go out today and take my GoPro and do some videoing that way, all right? Maine winters here are a lot of short days, usually devoid of sunlight, but we have sunlight today, and that's why I chose to film. Um, I have to go to Augusta to help them out tomorrow, so today is the day to do it. Um, but the days are shorter in the winter. They get darker faster, usually before 35 o'clock, and that can break a lot of people. It makes people depressed. <clears throat> Don't let it get to you. The first thing you need to do is get your mind right. You're going to get your mind right. And I mean right. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, start out with a positive day, okay? Uh, Maine's dark winters can take a toll on your well-being, all right? One thing that can help your mental health is, is for you to get out and actually enjoy some of this. I just bought a toboggan yesterday at Shaw's. It was on sale, it used to be 50 bucks. They marked it down to 19.99, so I bought it. I'm gonna take the kids out today and play in the, in the snow. Luckily, living in Maine, Community uh, activities don't stop in the wintertime. You can take advantage of the farmer's markets for nutritious products. Also, uh, you get less vitamin D from the sun in the wintertime. So I recommend you take extra supplements, vitamins, vitamin D, so that you can get the vitamin D you need, which will also keep your morale up and your health, okay? Uh, the United States alone has a, has a vitamin deficiency of uh, vitamin D. There's a lot of people that don't have it. I'm not a doctor. I did take it in college though, nutrition, and I usually take D and vitamin B3 daily, all right? I know a lot of you are wondering if you should take those supplemental packs. They're not gonna hurt you, 
but just keep in mind whatever your body doesn't need it's going to go out in your urine so unless you like expensive urine i take it easy on the vitamin supplements all right don't overdo it um this was a lot higher than it was but we got some rain and so it it, it kind of knocked it down a little bit uh, if you're outdoors doing outdoor activity, make certain you stay hydrated in the winter time because every, if you exercise in this cold, dry air, you're going to lose moisture every time you breathe. In addition to that, <clears throat> you lose moisture from the increased urine production in a cold environment like this. When you're out here in the cold, uh, I think the medical community calls it like cold-induced uh, diuresis, whatever it is, like diuretics, right? You need to replace this water in your body and having plenty of fluids is going to aid you in staying warm okay when you dress to uh, go outside and play there's other things that you need to consider if you're going to go up in a high elevation you might want sunscreen sunglasses uh, lip balm or chapstick and lotion I'm a postman my hands are cracking and splitting open because I'm you know I can't wear gloves when I when I do the mail because it just just magazines are slippery and stuff right so my hands split open all the time I got to use lotion uh, the Sun reflecting off the snow can burn your eyes give you sunburn uh, cause snow blindness that's why if you go skiing or hiking up in the mountains you want to make certain you, you bring a pair of sunglasses I keep them in my car all the time uh, as far as clothing stay dressed loose and in layers you see I'm wearing a fleece and you can put another jacket on over it but make sure it's loose and in layers and tuck your shirt in so the cold air doesn't blow up the back of your jacket and, and up your shirt and on your back all right if you're gonna play out in the snow get you some ski pants something synthetic so it doesn't it's water repellent and on windy days wear an extra layer that blocks the wind a windbreaker over this would keep me toasty at this time the thing is like 19 or 20 out right now uh, but don't bundle up too tight if you do there's no circulation and that's when you start getting cold weather injuries on that note if you get a cold weather injury up here in Maine you will have it for the rest of your life once you get your one of your extremities your ears or something you will have that for the rest of your life so make certain you cover your head all right if you're if you have poor circulation in your hands or you're a female not, nothing against females but they have smaller capillaries tend to get more uh, le less circulation than men do okay you might want to wear mittens instead of gloves if you're out just out you know out and about your fingers being together will keep them warmer all right you may have heard it said that you lose 80 percent of your body heat through your head that's a myth it was started by your mother she started that that myth and the other one about your face freezing that way if you didn't stick your tongue back in your head right it's not true that was disproved by uh, some researchers at <laughs> Indiana University in Indianapolis in 2008 I think it was in a British medical journal um, it's not true I don't know what the percentage of heat is that comes out of your head but if you go outside and you're bundling up cover your head you'll you'll be less likely to get cold you'll you won't have your morale ruined right because you're like oh if I'm cold I can't enjoy anything out here right farmers market or what have you make sure you bundle up properly if you're going to be out in the cold whether it's playing hiking or just out shopping take it seriously all right take the cold seriously preparing for snow as you can see I didn't have my road plow today right I don't panic every time it snows it doesn't bother me I grew up in this it doesn't bother me this is so light I don't care about it uh, I did have it plowed before when it was drifted up to my waist and two feet on the road so I just you know I got some shovels over there I got two teenagers they can shovel this out if I really want it shoveled out uh, in terms of roads usually the municipalities whether it's the state or the town will handle the snow removal you have to find out who's doing what in case they damage your mailbox but in a more remote area uh, you might need to remove it yourself uh, or hire somebody to do it like I do um, you're not gonna be able to go anywhere unless you have a way to clear the snow from your driveway and I, I, I don't shovel all the way down that's that's a lot of work um, if you're living in a rental your landlord may take care of it doubtful but he might make sure you ask that before you sign a lease who's responsible for snow removal or if you hire somebody he has somebody to do it it's a good question to ask all right depending upon your agreement it might be up to you don't be afraid to buy an extra shovel 
somebody might pitch in. You never know, all right? Especially if you live in a duplex or something like that. I've got one that pushes and I got one that, that you just mainly for scooping and stuff. But I got shovels. I got two, like I said, I have two teenagers. So you can do that. Um, if you purchase your own house, like me out here, it's up to you. I hire somebody personally because I just don't want to take and deal with it. I don't want to beat her truck. I don't want to beat her plow. If the truck gets damaged, the plow gets damaged, it's more money. And if the truck don't start, more money, more time, all right? It's not something that I want to deal with, all right? And it also takes experience to operate the blade and all that stuff. Uh, you just don't jump in a truck, start plowing, and think you got it down. You got to know how to deal with it. You got a hydraulic problem with the, with the, the plow thing raising it. You won't be able to do that, and it costs more money. So I don't deal with it, all right? Uh, if you damage your plow truck that you, you bought, it's expensive. If you buy a truck too small and try to plow with a six-cylinder Toyota or something like that, transmissions, differentials, and engines are not cheap. So I, I personally recommend a professional. My guy charges me 100 bucks to do an 800-foot long driveway. That is phenomenal. Uh, my guy Barrett's got a big 3,500 pickup truck with like a 10-foot folding blade. He's also got like a 3,000 pound sander, salter thing in the back. He was driving up here the other day like he was going to grandma's house because he's got, he runs these big giant snow tires with studs in them. And he's just driving up nice and slow and snow's just flying left and right from the, from the curved blades that he's got on there. Probably cost him north of $70,000, I don't know. I leave that stuff to him. My only headache is 100 bucks, okay? I don't care about that. 75 to sand if I want it plowed and sanded. Uh, as you can see, it's not that deep, so I'm not worried about it. I get off cheap and I save some money that way. Uh, one of you asked me a question about my dumpster, right? My little dumpster over here from Riverside, right? For my trash, 58 bucks a month, and that's cheap. That's like $2 a day. I will not drive to the transfer station to take my trash over there, all right? If you live in a remote area and you think it might be too expensive to have that area plowed you may need to invest in a snowblower and walk the four miles or so of road <laughs> doing it by the snowblower uh, so keep that in mind so you don't get stranded right because you're going to need to get out and, and get shopping and all that other stuff most importantly buy the snowblower before it snows does you no good if you're stranded and you can't get out all right uh, prepare your home or, or your apartment for the cold some of the tips i can give you on that are uh, they sell these like uh, I call them uh, like door socks. You can find them in craft magazines, stuff old ladies sell them. Anyway, it, it's, it looks like a giant tube sock and it lays at the, at the base of your door and it keeps the cold air from coming in, especially if you have an older house and the door thresholds are not that tight. You can, it'll help you reduce your heating bill. You don't have that cold airflow seeping in, okay? That's something to consider. Maybe go around and check all the windows if you're moving into an apartment or a house, make sure somebody didn't open a window, the top slid down a little bit, now you've got a cold air leak, okay? Uh, you might want to get a pellet stove or a wood stove. If you're in an apartment, probably not a good idea. You have to get permission. My sister has a soapstone stove, which is what I'm getting from her, uh, Heritage. Hers is great because when, when it burns out and they're asleep, uh, the soapstone's still emitting heat like for up to 12 hours. So her house always stays warm with that. They love it, they swear by it. The power goes out, she still got heat and that's why I wanna get that. I have yet to get my whole house generator from Kohler and that's what I'm gonna be getting because I just prefer a whole house generator and I'm gonna get a bigger propane tank when I do that. Um, but I haven't got that yet. What I have for the basement is a Mr. Buddy, the big one, so that my pipes don't freeze and my dogs and my teenager that live down there. Um, so I'll just put that out there. They sell them at Tractor Supply. I think it's like 160 bucks. But you can get one of those, heat your apartment, because your landlord can't do anything about a power outage. Just know that now. You can call them all you want. Power's out, it's out. Might be out at his house as well. So prepare for stuff like that. Keep that in the back of your mind. It's a propane heater. You screw two of the things on. It actually has batteries in the back for the, the uh, squirrel cage fan on the top that circulates around, so it'll blow uh, that heat around in your house or apartment. And it's Mr. Buddy. You can go on Tractor Supply website and find it, or you can get it at Amazon or whatever. Order one or two, whatever you need. 
And that way you have emergency heat. In the event that the power goes out, you can have candles, get a camping lantern or something so you have light, whatever it takes. And make sure you stock up on batteries. Stock up on a lot of stuff that you normally need, whether it's diapers, bottled water, whatever, so you don't have to go out in this all the time, okay? Uh, oh, automobiles. You wanna take care of your automobile. Um, batteries tend to freeze in the winter time, especially if you don't operate the car, you don't start it constantly. The heat from the engine will warm it up. Uh, the water inside the batteries can freeze and, and then it, I think AAA said something about uh, in winter time batteries lose like 35% of their power because of the cold. They're subjected to those sub-zero temperatures and it makes it uh, harder to start and if your battery's kind of old to begin with, especially if you've been living in the south in that heat, you might want to get a new battery right before winter starts up here, all right, before you come up here because you may not be able to start your car the next day and that'll leave you stranded. Um, Start your car up on days where you can't get out and go for a nice extended drive because you didn't buy that snow blower I was talking about earlier, right? And you got stranded. Let it run for 10 to 15 minutes and then your battery will, will charge up and you'll be good to go. But let it, let it run for a little bit and, and then you'll be good. Most batteries will last three to five years, um, but the cold and extreme temperatures of heat tends to take a lot out of them. So take care of that. Uh, tires. If you get tires, I just bought new tires for the Subaru. I just put uh, the new Cooper CS5s on there. They're 80,000 mile tires. I paid 898 bucks at uh, Don Fauche's in Damariscotta. And these Cooper tires, they're pretty decent. You got nice tread, 898 bucks. They threw in the alignment. Alignment's usually like 100 bucks. But I go to Don Fauche's because the guy they got is a 26 year veteran and he knows alignments. He gave, they gave you the printout showing what they did and uh, the car runs, it drives great, really great. I think the steering wheel was off just a little bit. That was corrected during the alignment, four wheel alignment. Uh, as far as the exterior goes, I go to Fast Eddie's because they got the undercarriage wash. I don't mind paying, uh, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 bucks for car wash. They got that wax and stuff, helps keep your car looking new. Also. Uh, helps protect it from the salts and the corrosives. Uh, you might want to consider getting a heavy-duty synthetic wax if you want to do it yourself. Um, but don't stop washing your car because it's snowed out or it's cold out. When the temperature does warm up, I think it was 40 yesterday, that's the time to go hit the car wash. Go out there. Hey, I'm going to go up there and get me some Jersey Mike's, which just opened in Brunswick, by the way. Um, been open three days. Before you go get your sandwiches, run through the, the car wash. Let it blast everything off pay the extra get the, the foaming um, wax or whatever it is synthetic wax they get on there the undercarriage do the undercarriage wash and all that stuff to help keep the corrosives off of your car they use salt and they use some other chemical now that, that they don't uh, that they put down on the roads I don't use a lot of chemicals up here I use just sand just that construction sand I was telling you about because I have a creek down there and I don't really want all these chemicals flowing into the creek I also don't want them absorbing into the ground because my well cap is right over here and I don't want that in my water. I don't know what it is. I don't want it in my water. Um, so I don't use a lot of chemicals. What else was I going to tell you? Uh, some of you asked me questions in the comments. Uh, I'm going to get out and do some more filming. I'll go out and see some more places. I know you're tired of seeing my driveway in my house, right? It's like, come on, dude. Get something else. So I'll answer some questions in your comments. I'll look at the comments there. I'll respond to some of your questions. But let's go out and, and take a look around. I'm gonna use the switch to the GoPro. I know you like the look of the Canon, but I'm gonna switch to the GoPro and we'll see how that looks. All right, hopefully I don't lose that much. Uh, the image quality is not as bad. I come over here in the sun. But I'll get out and, and, and go uh, for a ride and show you some other stuff. All right, let's take a ride. <clears throat> Right, you see how we handle down the road here. Goes pretty good. <clears throat> it's not plowed. We're sliding. It's all right. It's all wheel drive. It's good to go. We're good. It's 19 degrees outside. And we're heading down the road. Nice and slick. we 
go. This is my driveway, nice and long. Yep, I like to fly up it. I got X mode on this, but I don't even use it. It works pretty well. I've never put it in. My wife's used it before, but I've never used it because I don't worry about snow. Right, here we go. When you try and pull out, somebody comes flying down the road. Let me speed up. I see a guy trying to get out on the road. Let me speed up. Oh, it's a Prius. <laughs> of course. Uh, another libtard. Uh. I go for a ride down here to Shaw's and get some fresh vegetables to make some tacos tonight, I think. I think that would be the, the best thing to do. I hope this is recording because I can't see the back of the screen. Find out here in a second. Usually I speed this footage up because it's kind of boring watching somebody drive. But, you know, it is what it is. It's the sun's starting to set. Like I said, it's golden hour and it's about 432 right now. Remember what I said? It gets darker faster here in the winter time. And yeah so you want to do some filming you got to make certain you get it done before it gets too dark too soon and so i'm heading down to shaw's get some fresh vegetables uh i did some filming earlier i wasn't real happy i don't like the results i'm getting with the canon m50 right now i don't know it's just it seems to be a lot more work and it's just, I don't know. I really don't know if I'm gonna continue to use that camera. When most of the stuff that I do, I can use a GoPro to get away with, you know what I mean? I don't really need a, I don't even have a lens decent enough for, you know, if I wanted to zoom in or any of that other stuff. And that's what you would say, this is a side road behind the police department. The road's over there somewhere, but, I don't usually go that way. I like to go this way. Um, yeah. So. Tilt that up. There we go. Hold it like that. Yeah. I was trying to find my suction cup. I had a suction cup thing that went in the window up there on the windshield. Where I was going to put this in there and just aim, aim it towards me this way. And that way it's being held by the suction cup instead of me on the <clears throat> on the little monopod type stick carrying it around um, but this camera does good because it has hyper stabilization in it I can shoot in 2.7k the battery's at half mast <laughs> I should have checked that but but I can take it on the go anywhere if this was the Canon M50 we'd be getting a lot of wobble and shake and that that lens distortion that chrom chromatic aberration or the shutter roll, the rolling shutter there, you know, where it looks like you're at the driving theater and somebody kicks the screen and the whole thing wobbles. I hate that. Uh, Filmic Pro, and it's on Apple, on the App Store, and on the Play Store. You can make movies with that. Uh, in fact, I'm working on a short um, film for the post office type thing, basically describing why I work there. My day starts very early. I arrive usually before the mail truck. I start by casing my flats. But you can do that with this camera, the GoPro, or with your cell phone. And that's why I said I'm really getting annoyed with the, the I don't know how Casey Neistat ran around New York City and was vlogging with the 10 to 18 millimeter lens Canon 70D. I just, I don't get it. I don't understand how or why he would do that. I just don't like the look. It, it really annoys me. And he's carrying his camera on a Joby pod. So, I don't know. It just, to me, it seems like a lot more work. And it's a bigger unit. You can put the GoPro on this stick here. It's got hyper smooth, so you don't even need a gimbal. So, if you just get a GoPro 7, 8, 
nine or I don't know, it's ten out yet. If you just get one of those, it's got hyper smooth in it. It's got wide, super wide angle, so you can capture everything in that section. You can get a wide angle shot, or you can do linear, like I got it on now uh, for your vlogs and things. And then you just use a, a some form of wireless microphone or a lapel mic that you can plug in the thing there. And yeah, I just. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking this is a lot more simple. It's almost like a cop's body cam, right? You can pretty much take it anywhere and capture footage. I just, I don't know. I'm thinking that this is the way to go. Mm -hmm.